Each year, thousands of race teams throughout North America gather religiously at dirt tracks every weekend. From the biggest and shiniest rigs to the more modest pickup trucks and trailers. Drivers, owners, crew members, girlfriends, brothers, cousins, mom, pop, and granny too. To them, it's like church, cleansing the soul by getting loud and dirty. Most folks around dirt track racing are driven by passion, usually for their own satisfaction, but in some cases that passion is invested in others before themselves. For high school shop teacher Mark Lalonde, teaching kids life lessons in his program while building a race car is the true reason he races. Then we built this car from scratch there. Last year, you can see all the kids getting involved. They, they learn how to weld, they, know, they, they learn a lot of things there all mathematics, all the suspension and everything, there's a lot of things in there. It, it, at first you look at the car, it's only a race car, but it's not only a race car. And we are just a little family with that. Well, the only reason why we are doing this there is for the kids. That's the only reason why. If there's no kids in, involved in the project, well, I will stop racing for sure. Racing dirt cars is an outlet that only those who have strapped in behind the wheel can understand. Some are born with the opportunity to scratch the itch, but for others, it's a chase that can take most of a lifetime. Uh, we're getting older and uh, you gotta live life uh, every day. And uh, my wife went through a couple bouts of cancer and uh, it, makes you, it makes you think differently about life and what you're doing and, uh, and, the, and the things you should be doing instead of uh, wasting time. And, uh, I've always wanted to, and I'm, I'm in a position now where I can, so we're going to do it. I don't know for how long, but I'm going to, I've always wanted to try it, and I, I'm living out a dream. Racing is family, and for many, family is racing. It's common to see race teams running multiple generations deep. While it's a bit less common to see women behind the wheel, Melissa's out to prove she can run with the guys. Uh, they don't give you any leeway. They don't say, oh, it's a girl, I'll just let you go. But no, they, they fight for the positions just as hard as I do, so it's fair. I get a little nervous before, but as soon as I put the helmet on, it's game time, and I don't think about anything else but my foot to the floor. <laughs>
The sights, sounds, and smell of the racetrack are embedded into the minds of the folks that spend their weekend here. They wish every day could be like race day. Veteran announcer Timmy Baltz graduated his way up the racing ladder, but found his true calling on the microphone. This is his home. You know, I've been on the racetrack before. I know what it's like to be in the seat of that race car. I retired to the announcer's booth in 2001, and I've been in there ever since, and I still have the same passion. I treat announcing like I treat driving a race car. As the battle for fourth continues to go on between Lannister and Jan Bussier as Bussier. It's tough being 16 years old, you're, you're aspiring to be a full-time race car driver, and it's not going to come to terms. you got to figure out a way to stay in the business. Villadon, Matthew Bitt, Laramie trying to make one last shot at him, it won't happen. Off the corner, Luke Whitaker takes the loud and dirty 38 to victory lead. You could tell at that moment that he had the fire and the desire to go up there and win races. He was just a little red-headed red kid back then, and he's still a little red-headed kid nowadays. <laughs> Nicknames are commonplace around the dirt track. Luke Whitaker, AKA the Iroquois Outlaw, is no exception to that. Well, we had a little issue a few years ago and uh, I got penalized and I wasn't allowed to come back to the track for uh, the rest of the season. So we went and raced at some outlaw tracks that weren't sanctioned and that's how I got the name, the Iroquois Outlaw. Back in January, uh, I had a ski accident and uh, I broke my back and a bunch of ribs and my, my shoulder blade and collarbone. Um, so uh, in the hospital, I wasn't really sure if I was actually going to be back racing, let alone you know getting up and walking again. I guess the main thing was having my crew guys all you know they came and visited me in the hospital and, and I had uh, my engine builder Yves LaFrance there and uh, he visited me uh, unexpectedly a couple times and we had good racing chats and I think that's really what sparked me wanting to really get back in the car as soon as I could to keep it going and show that you know a little a little injury and, and stuff wouldn't hold me back and that I, I have the per perseverance to still make it out there. A top contender on any weekend known for his calm and cool style. You wouldn't take him for much of a bandit but once behind the wheel he drives it like he stole it. proud of my grandson and uh, I never miss a race. I call it an adrenaline rush and scared to death all at once. <laughs> well, if it was for the win, I'd take them out. <laughs> we could only save, you know, one student from dropping out of school. It's a passion for us. I really abandoned my camera on that one. I thought the car was gonna run my ass over. Yeah.
Uh, I guess we're just gonna send it tonight. <laughs> That's all we got. Good. All right. Thanks. Now we're done. <laughs> Did that not record?